Hello, explorers, and welcome to episode 54 of Unbroken. I'm Alexandra Amore, and I'm back with a little follow-up to last week's episode 53 with Tanya Elfersi, where she coached me. So I'm going to go through, as I mentioned, and pull out the things that really stuck out for me, the highlights, and talk about what resonated with me, maybe provide some clarity if things weren't clear. Tanya and I are quite good friends. We've known each other for over four years. We were in a mastermind group together. So I suspect that we were able to shorthand some things. So I just want to pull a couple of those things out and make sure that it was clear to you, the listening audience. And before we begin, just a couple of pieces of information I wanted to share. One is, so because of Tanya's uh, coaching session with me, my eating is back on track. I'm eating in a way that really works for me, that feels good and that feels healthy and it doesn't feel disordered for lack of a better word. You know, it doesn't, I don't feel that drive to overeat anymore. I, um, yeah, I just feel really good about the way I'm eating. So yay, that's a victory. And then the second thing is that if you're listening to this when it comes out, which is March, Thursday, March 13th, tomorrow, Friday, March 14th, I have a new course that's coming out on Insight Timer. And it has absolutely nothing to do with food or eating, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. So uh, if, if you're familiar with Insight Timer, it's an app that you can download to your phone, obviously. And it started out literally as a as a timer for people who wanted to meditate and they've expanded the the scope of their services quite a bit and so I've I'm on there as a teacher I think yeah that's the word they use teacher uh, sharing things um, about unwanted habits and eating and all that kind of stuff and the way it works is that if you download the app and you uh, you can access a whole ton of stuff for free. So you don't need a membership to access a number of different um, files. There, It's all audio. And I have two uh, tracks on there that you can listen to. So if you just search for my name, Alexandra Amore, on Insight Timer, you'll find those two tracks there. Very similar to what I talk about here on the podcast. And then the new course that I've released, so courses, quote unquote, which are more than one audio track, uh, are behind a paywall. So if you happen to be a subscriber to Insight Timer, then you'll have access to that course. And it's called, let me think about this, How to Tell if a Group Has Cult-Like Tendencies. I think that's what it's called. So obviously this is based on my background, uh, having been in a cult for 10 years in the 1990s. And it's something I'm passionate about um, sharing information about. Uh, helping people to understand what cults are and specifically how they work and how we can notice um, when we're getting into a situation which you know doesn't feel comfortable and we can gauge or analyze whether or not it's actually a cult so uh, yeah so that course is available um, if you have a paid subscription to insight timer Uh, If you do, give it a listen and give it a review. If you have a moment, that would be great. It's always helpful to have reviews and uh, other people's opinions about how the course is. It's not long. It's, it's, I think, five, roughly five-minute audio lessons. Um, Yeah, so that's that. And then the other thing I wanted to do was give a shout-out to a couple people who, who reached out to me after my uh, podcast from two weeks ago where I uh, was, you know, talking about how I was struggling and that kind of thing. So big shout out to Pam H. And who reached out to me and, and we had a lovely conversation and a little chat about our journeys with food and with, you know, all the things. Um, and it was so it was really nice to connect to you, Pam. And I just really appreciate the kindness and the care that people exhibited uh, by doing that. It was really, really sweet to see. I mean, obviously that's not why I did it, but, but then for that to be the, the uh, reaction, you know, the response, that was really, really nice. Okay, so on to today's 
recall, so if you haven't listened to, or today's episode, if you haven't listened to episode 53, I recommend that you go back and do that first because pretty much everything I'm going to talk about now is uh, related to things that come up during that conversation with Tanya where she coaches me uh, about my relapse as it were. I hate using that word you know it sounds so serious and uh, I don't know very kind of clinical. There's something about it that just really bothers me. It sounds dangerous you know having a relapse. So I, I, may, I need to find a new word. <laughs> I need to find a different word for that. All it was was that my habit came back after months of being away and I uh, really fell on my face in terms of trying to sort it out. And, uh, and then Tanya helped me, you know, get myself up on my feet again. So that was great. So the first thing I want to talk about is that she, the thing that really uh, resonated for me, or one of the things, was that partway through the conversation, she talks about how the feeling of the drive to overeat that I was experiencing was a message like I always say these things are feedback they're not we're not broken they're not uh, letting us know that there's anything wrong with us they are feedback and she just said it so simply that the the that feeling was letting me know that I had fallen off the path of truth that's what she, that's how she described it so I wanted to talk about that a little bit because when she said the path of truth, I knew exactly what she meant. And the words, those words specifically, the path of truth, aren't what's important in what she was saying. So she, that's the phrase that worked for her and that she used. But we could say, you know, that we had become, the, the feeling was letting us know that we, we had become disconnected from our divinity. We could say, um... They had pointed out that we were forgetting about our own well-being. We could say they were feedback about our, you know, our thinking, our state of mind. And when we get caught up in our state of mind, that's when we forget about our innate well-being and divinity. So if those words didn't really ring true, not ring true, if they were, if they didn't resonate for you exactly, the path of truth, that's okay. It's what they're pointing at that's really important. And the only tool we have to point to our divinity is language, you know, is these words that we use, especially when we're in it on a podcast format. So it's important to remember that it's not the words themselves that matter, it's what they're pointing to. And I've been listening to some Sydney Banks uh, recorded conversations lately on his YouTube channel and I noticed in one how much he was saying that it's not the words that matter it's the feeling behind them that's how he phrases it and so the feeling is is what we're pointing to that there's this uh, there's another huh, see it's so hard with language there's something else beyond just our human experience and and our experience of thought that's what we're trying to point to that there's an experience beyond that there's a part of us that is not limited by those things and so that's what Tanya was pointing to and I really got it right away and I've been reflecting since then of course on why did I forget about that? Because I was saying things to myself like, you know, this is feedback. It's telling me that I'm caught up in my thinking. And the answer is probably not perfectly clear to me. I think sometimes we just need help. You know, sometimes we just need someone to remind us of what the truth of ourselves is. And and as I talk about later in the call, and I'm trying to remember, do I bring that up here? Maybe So maybe I'll talk about this now. But later in the call, I talk about how I realized through that conversation with Tanya that 
I, I had been really wrestling with the feeling of the drive to overeat, the feeling of that um, wanting to eat more than is, you know, wanting to eat in a way that wasn't comfortable for me. And I need to make a note about potatoes. I need to talk about that for a second. Um, so yeah, I, so I got caught up in wrestling with that feeling and, and what happens when we, as I talk about all the time, when we wrestle with something, it gets sticky, right? That's the thing that makes it sticky because we believe it's real. We believe it's a problem. So even though I was saying to myself, this isn't a problem, I know it's feedback. I still was looking at it as a problem. I guess that's the simplest way to say it. I still, in some part of myself, uh, an unconscious part perhaps, was seeing this as a problem. And what Tanya was able to remind me of and bring to light is that these things aren't a problem. They are, they're a message uh, from the wiser parts of ourselves. So what else? Oh, so I just mentioned potatoes. Um, one thing, actually in my conversation with Pam, who I spoke to after the episode two weeks ago, that I, I wonder if I haven't made clear enough is that during that relapse <laughs> or whatever we're going to call it, um, I talk about, you know, being drawn to rice and potatoes. And I, I don't think I spent enough time explaining that I didn't need, I wasn't demonizing rice and potatoes. There's nothing wrong with rice and potatoes. They are, you know, a healthy part of any diet or almost any diet. Um, and by diet, I mean just a way of eating, not a way to lose weight. Uh, and so the reason they were bothering me was be specifically because I had been trying to avoid starchy foods and starchy foods have started to give me as I age a little bit of acid reflux. So I was trying to avoid them for that reason. And I could tell that I was eating them as comfort food. And I think, you know, one of those, one of the reasons for that is that I don't eat anything sweet really anymore. I'm allergic to wheat. So like I never ever eat cake or cookies or anything like that, simply because I can't. And the stuff that is, you know, gluten free that you get in the grocery store just doesn't taste great. So I, and I, I'm just not interested at all. So I think the, <laughs> my focus on rice and potatoes, it was just my way of, um, my body expressing this, the drive to overeat and then trying to get a message to me. That's all it was. So I hope that's clear. I don't, I don't, if it's not, let me know. Uh, you can always send a question to Alexandra Amore forward slash questions. So this is an edit that I'm inserting, something I've never done before. But after I stopped the re previous record or stopped the recording of this episode, I went to the grocery store where we have the best ideas. And I realized there were two things I wanted to say that I neglected to say about this uh, rice and potatoes issue that might help to explain or explore what I'm pointing to. So the first thing is that it's not about the food, right? As the title of my book says, it's never about the food. And the self-help industry and the diet industry don't understand this. And this is why you and I have experienced so much failure when it comes to diets and self-help and all that stuff. Because it's not about the food that we're eating. It's about the feeling that's inside us that's trying to wake us up. And when, so when I talk about eating rice and potatoes, I'm just talking about the thing that happens to scratch that itch for me in the moment. It's not about the rice and the potatoes. They are not a problem. The, where I want to be looking 
is at the feeling that's within me and understanding what's th what that feeling is trying to say to me. And as we're exploring what that feeling is trying to tell me is I've, I'm, I've fallen asleep to my own innate well-being or I've forgotten my own divinity, however you want to say it. So just an important thing to remember, it's never about the food. It's not about the food. And a great example, and this is why I'm adding this edit in mostly, that I thought of while I was at the grocery store, is a story from Christine Heath. So Christine Heath is, uh, I think, one of the founders of the Hawaii Counseling and Education Center, which is a mental health facility that is three principles based. And she studied with Sydney Banks and she has a podcast with Judy Sedgman and the podcast is called Psychology Has It Backwards. And Christine tells a story on the podcast and I'm sorry, I don't remember what episode it is because it was quite a while ago now that I listened to it. But she tells a story about her own drive to overeat. She doesn't call it that, those are my words, but she talks about a period where and I can't remember what was going on but where she really felt strong urges to overeat and the interesting thing was that she was and I and forgive me I may be messing up some of the details but she was intended to be a really really healthy eater um, really focused on healthy food so for her, the way that she dealt with the drive to overeat was to, she would cook and then eat an entire head of cauliflower. And so I think this is just such a perfect example because it points out a couple of different things which are really important to see. One is that the drive that we're feeling, the urge that we're feeling to overeat um, can be satisfied in a way by anything as long as it has meaning for us. So just as I was satisfying that feeling temporarily with rice and potatoes, Christine was able to do it with a completely healthy food. I mean, if you said to somebody, hey, I'm, you know, I'm eating too much cauliflower, they'd go, what, what's the problem? Like, that's not an issue. But she knew, probably because she could feel the feeling inside her, that desperation, the drive to overeat, the urges, you know, to have too much food in her stomach, those feelings were within her. So she knew it was disordered, what she was doing. And also, <laughs> an entire head of cauliflower is too much food for anyone you know that's too much cauliflower so she knew it was um that she was experiencing something that needed resolution and that was the way that that she that her drive to overeat was expressing itself so I want to point that out because it's so important to see that we can experience these feelings, these urges to eat, and we typically think about them around food that might be labeled as unhealthy, you know, chocolate or um, potato chips or candy or sugar, cake, all that kind of stuff. But it's not about the food because we can have this feeling about anything. We can have it about cauliflower, right? And that was what Christine experienced. So I wanted to share that. I thought it was really important to point out and I had forgotten about that story. I haven't probably thought about it in 18 months or two years or something, but needed to share it. So, uh, okay, now we'll carry on. Okay, so Second thing I want to point out, and it's related to this, that first thing about the path of truth, is just a reminder that our feelings are always, always um, letting us know whether we're connected to the path of truth or not. And again, fill in that phrase with whatever you want. 
They're telling us whether we're connected to our divinity or not. They're telling us whether we're connected and remembering our well-being or not. Whatever phrase you want to use, they're, they're a barometer and they're such a good gauge of whether or not that's happening uh, is the best way to describe it. So you can always trust the feelings that you have in your body. They are the perfect gauge for whatever's going on with you. And so when, so let's just take, take an example of um, being in a relationship as opposed to something having to do with food. If you're in a relationship with someone and you, um, you know, you're having a disagreement with that person and you suddenly feel all uh, stirred up inside and angry perhaps and frustrated and, you know, really tense and wanting to get your point across or victimized or whatever it is, that feeling is letting you know this is <laughs> this is probably not the moment to have a conversation with your spouse or loved one. Um, and if you if you step away, um, your mental state will return to one of calm and quiet and peace because that's the way it's designed. And Tanya talked about that as well, about how um, awareness is everything. And so this is a really good point to, to, or moment to talk about that. So what's happening when we feel the drive to overeat or we feel like shouting at our spouse or whatever it is, that when we become aware of that is the, is another thing that Tanya was really pointing to about how important that is. And really it's just the awareness that we need. So when we become aware of what's happening, that we have a, a feeling in our inside ourselves that's not good, that's not, uh, just doesn't feel like a good feeling. And we all know the difference always, all the time. That then it becomes um, the responsibility of our divine engineering to, um, what would we say, adjust that situation, to shift it, to resolve things. Um, that's where insight might step in. So what one thing that was really important that I hadn't seen before that Tanya said was that we we can really rely on, I guess I just, I saw it at a new level. I shouldn't say I saw it for the first time, but I definitely saw it at a deeper level is that awareness is what we need. And then we can rely on our divine engineering. So a few episodes ago, I talked about, I think it might've been episode 52. I talked about, um, you know, is there a way to cultivate insight? And I had, I had started to go down that rabbit hole with myself, maybe looking for practices to cultivate insight. And after the call with Tanya, I realized actually there isn't really a need for that because awareness is everything. And once we're aware and we're aware that our divine engineering will take over and uh, shift things for us, that we will have insights, then um, that's enough. That's all we need to do. So, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with e creating a practice if you want to, to see if it would create more insight. But I can really see that, that where I want to look now is in the direction of simply being aware of how I feel. And as soon as I'm aware of how I feel, and I know that that's letting that's a message you know if I'm having a bad feeling um, if I'm having a feeling that bothers me that's not comfortable that feels um, yucky the awareness of that is 99% of the battle and then um, I just need to remember that that's that's just that's a message like I said earlier that's a a barometric reading letting me know where I'm at and 
when we have those yucky feelings, where we're at is we're disconnected from our own sense of well-being or our own sense of divinity or our own path of truth, however you want to phrase it. So that was the next point I wanted to make. And then what else have I got written down here? Um, oh, geez, I think I've covered most of what I had made notes about. Um, I think looking back serendipitously, that quote that I brought to Tanya right at the beginning of the episode was really um, interesting because it it reflected exactly what we talked about on the call. So the quote from Sid Banks was, you are a divine being walking through this world looking for yourself. I think that's what it was. And that's exactly what we're doing. We are spiritual beings, divine beings, you might say, aspects of the divine walking through a human world having a human experience and trying to remember our own divinity and it's so easy and I'm sure millions and millions of people have walked through their entire lives without realizing that without recognizing and I would have if I hadn't stumbled across this understanding without recognizing that we have this engineering that's in place that we don't need to do anything about that as soon as we're aware of how we're feeling it takes over and it will bring us back automatically and naturally every time to our center or our sense of well-being or our connection with our divinity so yeah I thought it was really cool that I had just heard that quote the night before and then like I say yeah it pointed to everything that Tanya and I talked about on that episode and the one other thing I thought of um or I guess that's well, it's connected to that, actually, to our divine engineering. I thought of this little analogy. If you've seen the movie Finding Nemo, uh, it's an animated movie by Pixar, and there's there the characters are little fish. There's a blue fish who's looking for his son, Nemo, and there's an orange fish, of course, and you're probably all familiar with this, but just in case you're not, uh, named Dory and she's on the journey with the dad fish trying to help him find his son and Dory has short-term memory loss she's uh, voiced by Ellen DeGeneres on in the film and um, related to this idea of our divine engineering and to the fact that we don't need to do anything to once we're aware of what's going on, that we've fallen off the path of truth, that our, that our engineering, Tanya called it our system, then kicks in and it supports us and it um, creates the insights and the changes and all the things that we need to carry on and return to a really good feeling. So it's like being Dory in, in that ocean. In other words, so Dory loses her memory and people keep reminding her uh, about things that she's forgotten. And when we're walking in this world, we're doing the same thing. You know, we just we're constantly forgetting and then waking up to it, forgetting and then waking up to it. And asking ourselves, well, how can I fix this? How can I make this different? How can I change my unwanted habit um, what sort of willpower tools can I l use to do that what sort of regimen or um, structure or that sort of thing can I use to stop myself from eating the thing that I you know that I really crave but that I don't want to be eating um, lost my train of thought there for a second hang on 
just like Dory. <laughs> uh, when we wake up to that, that, and then people, oh yeah, and then people ask, what can I do? What can I do to return to being connected with my well-being? Um, it's it, That would be just like Dory saying, what can I do to return to the water? You know, what can I do to return to be in the ocean? And of course, she's never left the ocean. And uh, it's the same with us. We've never left our divinity. It's always there. So just like Dory is swimming through the ocean and forgetting things and then being reminded of them again, she is always, always uh, in her natural state, in her state of being a fish in the ocean. And she, there's nothing she needs to do to return to that state of being in the water and being a fish. And it's the same with us. And when we, I know it can be a little bit hard to get our heads around that a little bit. Um, because we can feel so separated from, from the divine parts of ourselves, from our well-being especially if we've been caught up in the self-help self -help world like I was for 30 years where everything is focused on the problems that we have and fixing those. But I just wanted to bring that up as a reminder and I thought that was a good visual um, because so many people have seen that film and I have heard it brought up before um, as a metaphor about about our divine engineering and who we are that it is like a fish asking about what's water so uh, yeah I thought that little analogy might be helpful so I think that's about all I have to share on this episode I mean there was so much that I appreciated about that coaching call with Tanya and just a big shout out to her because it was so special for me especially to be able to speak to somebody who I was who I'm friends with and who I trust and who knows me you know she she knows me really well um, and yeah so I just really appreciate you Tanya Alfersey it was so good having you coach me and uh, I hope that I mean, of course, the intention of releasing that coaching call was to be helpful to others. So I really hope it was helpful for you and that think some things stood out to you or resonated with you. And if you have any follow up questions about the call or anything that I've said here today, uh, you can leave a comment on the blog post. If you go to unbrokenpodcast.com and then scroll down. This is number 54. And if you click on that, you'll go to the blog post. And then if you scroll down to the bottom of the blog post, you can leave a comment. And I would love to hear if, you know, something resonated with you or if you are puzzled by anything. And like I said at the beginning, you can also go to, if you want to be more private, you can go to alexandraamore.com forward slash questions and uh, submit a question there as well. So I think that's about it for me today. Uh, I hope you are doing well and taking good care. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye.